Motherhood is a lifetime adventure. The hardest non-pain 24-hour job you will ever do. It means to sleep with one eye open and to always worry if you try, even if you try not to. You need to be a guide, a coach, a cheerleader, policewoman, a superhero, a friend, and a confidant. Even if you are ill and all you want to do is hide under the covers. You need to do your best and remember it is okay not to be perfect. To give lots of love under any circumstance. The kissing of boo-boos and hugs from the time your child is born through adulthood. Giving a listening ear. Providing our best advice, whether it was asked for or not and lots and lots of prayers to God, asking for strength to get through it all. I was a single parent from the time my son was two years of age. I needed to be both mother, father, and at the same time, work a full-time job. There were difficult times for both me and my son, a shortage of money sometimes, that did not allow anything extra for him, like field trips to the school, summer camps, and the same sports shoes that the other kids had, or a bottle of Tia Maria for me. Throughout all of our trials and tribulations, we managed with God's help through prayer. I felt our love for one another was always there. I do admit sometimes that love was hard to find. During my son's first year of high school, I wanted to run away from home and leave him the house. I got calls from the school, which seemed like it was every day while I was at work, asking me where he was because he wasn't in this particular class. He hated this one class and did not like the teacher. He still did not show up for every class as he was supposed to, no matter how many discussions he and I had about it. Oddly enough, he passed the course with a good mark. Go figure. What was all that angst about? After all, it was always in God's hands. Once he finished high school, he went off to university. After graduating his first year, he said to me, you are wasting your money and I'm wasting my time. I want to get a job, save my money, and then travel for as long as my money holds out. What is a mother to say? I wanted him to stay in school, but he did what he said he would. He earned enough money and off he went out west across Canada and back home through the United States. All my family and friends thought I would be very upset and lonely when he left. The thing is, I finally had time for me. And I did not feel lonely or guilty about how I felt at all. And no, I didn't change his room into a gym while he was gone by any means. But our love for one another is always there. We do not leave each other physically or end a phone call ever without saying, I love you. God has blessed us and watches over each of us. By the way, if my son knew I was talking about him to all of you, he would not be happy with me to say the least. So I will not be confessing to him about what I said today, but now all of you know what God has always known. I will end with this. A mother is God's special creation. A mother is a light shining in the dark, illuminating the path for her family. Have a blessed and happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Pat. You're welcome. Good morning, everyone, and happy Mother's Day. 
What does it mean to be labeled mother? According to the dictionary, the definition of mother is a woman in relation to her child or children. Robert Browning said of motherhood, all love begins and ends there. Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. And Rumi said, we are all born of love. Love is our mother. Yes, mothers are very special people. I believe it to be true because I am a witness. They are the embodiment of love, warmth, nurturing, protection, patience, and understanding. I have always marveled at the strong pull on love a child has for his or her mother. I never saw my husband cry until the day he agreed to be one of his family's pallbearers for his mother on the day of her funeral. My own son, from the time he could walk and talk, has always been my protector through words and deeds. My bright, practical daughter keeps me grounded. These days, she picks up and delivers my weekly groceries coming to Thornhill from Newmarket. My own mother left this earth a mere five years ago, but not a day passes without her occupying my thoughts. Though I admired the nurse, seamstress, artist, avid gardener, decorator and designer, top-notch chef and antique collector, it is the simplest things about her that I treasure. Back in the late 1950s or early 60s, my younger brother and I were in hospital awaiting tonsillectomies. She instinctively knew that I was afraid and unsure of what was happening. On saying her goodbyes to us that day, she took one glove from the pair she was holding, gave it to me and said, you hang on to this for me. I'll be back to get it from you. That feeling of love, warmth and protection has never left me. When I think of her, I remember the sweet yet salient moments of my childhood. The flower cart she created by decorating my English replica doll pram for a kindergarten field day contest. It was completely immersed in flowers. And yes, I garnered first prize. The terrarium she helped me plant for a science project. My grade four comprehensive famous people booklet, which received a grade of 100%. Early inspirations for my teaching career, perhaps. A child knows neither past nor future, only the present. And my mother was present for me. Throughout my childhood, Mom and I were best friends, but I will always think of her through my innocent childish eyes. The circle of life continued, and I too became a mother and realized how all encompassing motherhood was. You run the gambit of emotions, and at times you can feel like you are drowning you can feel the pressure. You second guess yourself. You are forever vulnerable and everyday decisions are no longer routine. 
There is a network you sense with women throughout history who have tried to terminate conflict, drunk driving, and prejudice. You think rationally about most issues, but become temporarily unwound when discussing the threat of economic uncertainty, the negative effects of pollution on our planet, pandemics and nuclear war to our children. As we all know, life doesn't come with a manual, it comes with a mother. Jacqueline, o. Kennedy, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis said, if you bungle raising your children, I don't think whatever else you do well matters very much. It took me a long time to understand that perfection and motherhood can be a toxic mix. The solution is to enjoy the pure, unadulterated love that encompasses your whole maternal being. My children are grown now, are successful and happy. I did a good job and I am proud. If lucky, life's journey brings you around to the role of grandmother at a time when you are wiser, patient, and oozing with hugs and kisses, short on criticism, and long on love. I am blessed with two exceptional grandsons and one delightfully funny granddaughter. Few things are more delightful now than grandchildren fighting to sit on your lap. A grandmother's love is strong, pure, unconditional. Hmm, like that of a mother. Mother and grandmother, a role most never regret. Though we are mere mortal beings, who stumble along life's path into this most wonderful of callings, that of being a mother, a blessed gift from God. I'll leave you with a quote from one of my favorite writers, Rudyard Kipling, who said, God could not be everywhere, and therefore he created mothers. Thanks be to God. Man.